Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, and it is Thursday. That means the three amigos are back at it. Uh, we'll start with Matt this time. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome, Mike. Super excited to be here and even more excited about this topic because of what it means for us. There you go. And other investors. And Dion, how are you? Howdy, Mike. Ready for round two. Excited about this because this is actually something that's happening in my local world. It is. Oh, my goodness. This I got to tell you, I've been in the game 20 years. I... Um, I'm going to say it. I never thought I would see it. I never thought I would see bidding wars on rental units. It's, I, I, I will admit, I didn't even know it was possible <laughs> to have bidding wars on rentals, but we have done so many things to disturb the natural order of rentals, mm -hmm. i.e. eviction moratoriums and keeping people who can't pay in units, which, oh, by the way, just like rent control keeps units off the market for the people that want the units, a la less supply, same demand, we have this problem. So I'm going to bring up an article from CNBC because I think everyone needs to appreciate that the government did this. Mm -hmm. um, I actually don't think it's going to last. It can't last, but it's definitely happening right now. And this is not a sign of goodness. This is a sign of badness. Is that mm -hmm. even a word, badness? I don't think it is a word, but who cares? Let me bring it up. I don't, did either of you see this already? Yes, saw it read it, lived it. So wow. yes. I haven't seen it, Mike, because like um, everyone I know, we sit and we wait for you to give us the news. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So can you guys see this now? The, is the that Dion, Dion, is that you doing the work? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do most of the work. Yes. <laughs> He's just out doing deals, man. He's just I doing deals. It. It's the way to go. So uh, this is the headline. Can you guys see it in the left? I guess it's on the left part. It says, bidding wars erupt for renters as economy recovers in a hot housing market. That come through? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So let's, it, I believe it's summarized in the three bullets. There it is. There's Diana. Yeah, there's Diana. <laughs> I've been watching Diana since the real estate crash. I actually started feeling really bad for like in six, seven, and eight, which is like, it's down again. It's yeah. down again. Anyways, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> so again, right, bidding wars is something I'm very familiar with in um, units, right? Buying, but I never thought I would see them in, in, uh, in rentals. We have the national rents, as I've talked about in our daily financial news, up 7% for bedroom or apartments and almost 9%. And let's not forget that single family rentals are likely even up more. Mm -hmm. And this is all because of the COVID eviction moratorium, right? That is keeping supply off the market. So some landlords are in enviable positions with vacant units. And it's just, as the jobs come back and people... You know, they, they moved home with mom and dad. Now they're going out and they're going into an environment with less units. And it is, uh, rents are going to explode higher. That's why I think CPI is going to go higher. I talk about that almost every day on the on the daily financial news. So any any thoughts on this first, Dion? You said you're seeing this right now. What you seeing? So one of the problems we have when the government tries to get involved in rentals is almost every step they take makes it harder for the renter you increase property taxes because you need the revenue. Well, the landlord passes that on to the tenant. Mm -hmm. You put in things like rent control and a landlord is forced to do the maximum increase every year so that their property value doesn't fall behind and can't catch up. Mm -hmm. When you have something like a, an eviction moratorium, you increase the risk to the landlord. And anytime an investor has increased risk, you make the return needs to scale yep. in proportion to the risk. So we have things like higher criteria. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a higher credit score. You're going to need more multiples of the amount of rent. Yep. You're going to need a larger deposit. Rents will go up to justify and help mitigate the risk of not being able to evict. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing now, and like I said, this is happening in my local market. I listed a property June. So July 1st was the move-in date and had 12 applicants. And several of the emails were, you know, how much are you charging for rent? What is your deposit? Once I got an, uh, the first qualified applicant to turn in an ap actual application and was letting the other ones know I've, I've gone through with someone else. I got three emails back of saying, well, what if I offered this amount? And they went up to $150 more than what I was asking per month. My brother um, has a unit available right now that was rented at 1250. It's it was vacant for a month. We did, he did, cause he, he's got the skills, some flooring work and some light rehab and it's renting out for 1700. And people are saying, because they're competing, can I pay more to lock in me as the person you pick? Wow. Uh, and like you, that is not something I thought I would ever see. Man, this is, 
this is such a sign that when you go in and you mess with the system, the people you're trying to help get hurt the most. Mm -hmm. This is not a good feeling. Mm -mm. So Matt, are you seeing something similar out there? Yeah. Let the free market be the free market. I was meeting with an appraiser. Um, he was talking about rents. He goes, uh, how long have you had these rents? And he goes, they're a little low. And I said, those are all my new prices. <laughs> and he's like, it's like, yeah, they're a little bit light. And I was like, really do tell. And he said that building around the corner, he said two bedroom units were 2,200. He said, they just raised them to 27. Jesus. 27 went from 22 to 27. This is for a two bedroom apartment. That's a 20% bump. Yeah. It's a two bedroom. Mike, it's even crazier than that. It's a two bedroom apartment in the downtown of a 26,000 person city. Oh, this is not healthy. This is it's, not okay. And, and it gets worse. The three bedrooms that were 27 are now 3250. Jesus, wow. This is a three bedroom, nice, well-appointed apartment. Yeah. But those numbers are insanity. Like they're absolute insanity. We did, so we just did a, we were getting 800 for some of our studios. Just for the heck of it, put it out for 11. Done. I had- 20 qualified applicants in 30, 36 hours. Which means you undershot. Again, yeah. And I went from eight to 11. Yeah, mine was 11.30 to 18 and still had those 12 applicants. Oh my God, say applicants. that again, 11.30? 11.30 was the previous, and it was kind of on me because that was an, acquire, uh, an uh, inherited tenant, tenant. Right. that was yeah. an older couple yeah. and I didn't mess with their rent. I didn't even use the binder strategy. I just kind yeah. of left them where it was. I so 12 to 13 should have been where they were at. But the, the increase was to 1800 and I undershot. Yeah. Yep. I just did one that was, I did another one, Mike, that was 770, mm -hmm. uh, 1250. And again, this and is. I, and all I did, and all I did was put new floors in and paint. Yeah. Again, this is, and this is, this is, ju this is just starting again. I keep, I'm trying to catch, I do the daily financial news every day. Uh, and this rent thing is going to be a problem. It's not showing up today in CPI. And all of this yeah. is going on right now. And housing for most of the country is going to keep going up. And then if, oh my God, if rates go up, that just means more no answers. That just means more renters. This eviction moratorium has to get out of the way. Or, um, oh, it's just going to so be. It's the, it's the few bad apples spoiling the, spoiling the bunch. Yep. You know, There are some people who are going to suffer because they can't afford the way the rents are going. But there's an That's order right. of operation to setting rents. Mm -hmm. And a lot of investors purchased properties as prices were going up, forgetting about the change to things like property taxes, because mm -hmm. purchasing a property creates an event that the county tax assessor can right. say, yes, this property was $100,000 10 years ago, but you just paid four. So this is the new tax rate, which then gets passed off into rents. And sure. rental prices aren't determined by the price of the property. They aren't determined by the landlord's expenses, because tenants don't care about that. <laughs> rental prices are set by what the market will bear and what they would have to pay somewhere else. So sure. as each landlord has to increase the rent to cover those expenses across the board, tenants are competing at a higher level for higher rents with less places available. And so the people that are going to get pushed out are going to have to become commuters. They're going to have to move to new areas. Uh, and it's, I think it's going to happen at a pretty large scale because my units are pretty rural. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. between Tacoma and Olympia and Washington. I'm not in either one of those cities. And my rents are increasing exponentially. Yeah. The investors I work with, their rents are in, in increasing at the same rate. Um, and the problem is there are tenants for those rents. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no reason for the rents to come down. No, uh, again, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to say this without, let me just think about it for a sec. Uh, let me stop sharing. This is just nuts. So there's very few things that you could say, or I would say with certainty are going to happen in the next 12 months. Uh, first off, inflation is going higher, right? Especially rent. I mean, I'm talking not government inflation, the one that they freaking mismanage, real. Mm -hmm. like real inflation, gas, food, rent going up. I think interest rates will go up, but not not huge, but they'll go up from where they are today. I think taxes are going up in the next 12 months. And then the last thing, I think rents are going to go, I think rents will go up the most out of all of those. So again, if you're doing the work and you're looking in your market, you find a great deal today. I think it's pretty easy to pencil in higher rents, rents in the future, but get that 30 year debt. So you don't have any of that, you know, uh, risk uh, with the interest rate. So 
I can't there's believe also, bidding wars. Can't believe there's it. also one other factor that I wasn't thinking of until literally just this second. But working from home is also impacting people who don't want to be home buyers. Yeah. So you've had several videos on the person living in the city paying $4,500 for an apartment, moving to the country and paying $1,500 for a mortgage, but then owning the place. There's a bunch of renters that are going to be moving from cities to work at home, where I think most of, I believe our units aren't in you know, downtown, big, large cities. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that could be one of the factors. There is more renters that don't have to live in the, you know, where the work is. Yeah. The other thing is we got to get this eviction moratorium behind us. I, you know, I, I'm still waiting on about, I just, I did the math because of some of the videos we've done together. There's about $36,000 in rental assistance I'm still looking for, but some of those tenants, they just have to go. And then, you know, there's, it's just like rent control. Rent control yep. works great for you if you get it the day it comes out as a tenant, but rent control over years and decades crushes tenants because nobody moves. That's why you have a whole family of four living in a one bedroom because when they got the voucher, they stayed in a one bedroom. They can't move, there's no inventory. Yeah, this, this eviction thing is really hurting. I did not, I, I'm still shocked that there's bidding wars and you guys are seeing it. That's, I don't yeah. really feel good about that. That's, that's unfortunate. No, I mean, Mike, I had to, you know, I had one ad that got 400 responses in three, three days, oh 400. God. And Mike, your town is tiny. It's 20, that, that city is like 26,000 people. It's 26. I had 400 emails, 400. I thought I got hit by a bot or a virus. <laughs> like, bam, 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 bam. And, and Mike, it was not a bargain. It wasn't, right. I mean, it was, it was market market price. Yeah. Or what I thought was anyway. Yeah, apparently you were under market. Yeah, and I thought, and we were pretty high as it was, but these numbers, they're just, they're exactly what they said, we said were going to happen. They're exactly the thing that's creating tight supply. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs it. You know, like, and Mike, I'm getting text messages because we self-manage. So I'm getting text messages from eight, from people that rented for me eight years ago saying, is there mm -hmm. any chance that you have something? It was a fun time to mess with somebody that actually left owing me 500 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting on that 500 with yeah, interest. Yeah, I wrote him, like him back. I was like, I was like, for you? Nope. Nope. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. Well, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is an interesting time. Again, if you're a landlord and you're in a situation, uh, I get asked a lot in the group, as both of you do, about Rent-A-Meter. It's not a time to use an online app. They no. are way off. Way would off. You yeah. Would you agree, Matt? All the time. I always, always, I don't use rent meter I don't use any of that crap. I actually do my own research because I trust me and I want to look at Craigslist. I want to look at apartments.com and I have friends in the industry where I can literally call them up and say, tell me what the most, most recent three bed, one bath apartment you just rented was yeah. and how well appointed it was. Actuals, what the market actually is. And then at this point, Mike, I'll even take whatever number they give me and add a hundred bucks. Crazy. And throw it out there. How about you, Dion? Yeah, nothing to lose. You, Dion? So I did a video on setting rents in a hot market. And for the first few years, once I kind of had my systems in place, I would use Rentometer. I would call the housing authority because um, they were usually spot on for my area. And they and I would increase slowly over time. But in 2020 and 2021, that those, those ways of finding your rents are based on historical data. And historical right. data is not keeping up with current demand. You know, a 5% increase a year, it was kind of average. And, and mm -hmm. this year we're seeing 15 to 30% increase wow. on rents. Yeah. And so I can't do that. Rentometer, even some of the things on Craigslist, and the hard part when you're looking for rents is tenants are going to do the same thing. But they're going to find all of the apartments that are for low income because they're not listed as low income. It's just going to say, you can rent a two-bedroom apartment for $1,100 here. Then if they contact them, they realize that that's not going to right. work. So that was a bad metric for me to be using too. And I, so I went with like Matt does, I, I, I tried to basically rent a place myself. Yeah. What would the steps be? I went to apartments, Craigslist, uh, talk to property managers and increase from that because this isn't, it's rockets and feathers. Mm -hmm. Rents go up like a rocket. They come down like a feather. Exactly. And right now we're in the rocket phase. Yeah. Like I, again, and I've been doing it 20 years. This is the, this is not, I mean, I'll say it. This is nuts. I mean, I thought, I thought like 10, 11, 12 were good years. Cause that was like, that was like 10%. I, 
I was like, dude, 10%. Because that was after years of flat. I was like, oh, cool. We're catching up for lost time. It's all good. Right now is bananas. Just bananas. Wow. So it if is. I could, mm -hmm. <clears throat> to kind of parallel our first topic today of one area popping, creating a bubble pop. Yep. If the bubble pops and people lost their houses and there was all these foreclosures, that creates more renters. Yes. Right now, rents are skyrocketing. So everybody watching right now, <laughs> this is the time to buy. Yeah, because we all wish we had bought a year ago. We've all seen over 15, not all, but most of us have seen over 15% appreciation. Rents are going up. It is going to be a year from today mm -hmm. in a year. And you want that to be the time you bought today. Yeah. Well, I'm okay. If you're looking in Fresno, California, you could just wait for Boise to pop. I'm okay with that. I'll, I'll find a few more units. It's, I'm totally cool with that. So Dion, how can people follow you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, and in the Bigger Pockets community, uh, especially in the Facebook groups. That's where I do most of my posts. That's awesome. And Matt? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and lumberjacklandlord.com. Find me both there. And in your amazing course that uh, people should still be in making an investment in their self and tr themselves and trying to understand their market as it sits today, because real estate is hyper-local. And if you're doing the work now, as other markets shift, you'll want to see what's going on in your market and understand it so you can put yourself in the best position to get on the ladder. And that's what we're going to talk about in episode number three is I'm calling a housing slowdown. We're going to talk about what each of us are seeing in our markets, any signs of a slowdown, or is it still banana? So guys, thank you very much for being a part of my Thursday afternoon and the channel's Thursday afternoon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Ciao.